Hey everyone, um, so I've been reading The Apocalypse of Moses, um, one of the versions of the life of Adam and Eve, and I just wanted to talk about it. Um, studying these times, like, you know, studying the Cave of Treasures and and the life of Adam and Eve and um, the first book of Adam and Eve, I think we could really begin to piece together what really happened in the garden. Now the apocalypse of Moses, um, we know through like Jubilees and the second Esther's that on Mount Sinai, Moses wrote extra biblical text. Uh, pertaining to the consummation of the times, pertaining to the last days. So these books that are claimed to be written by Moses, let's take Jubilees. Does Jubilees tell us about the last days? Um, yes, it does. Does the Testament of Moses tell us about the last days? Yes, it does. So um, not only can we tell through the narration, even though it's translated through the Greek, that Moses did indeed write these books. And what's called the Apocalypse of Moses. <laughs> um, what's called the Apocalypse of Moses. Um, I think we have like copies of a copy of a copy of a copy. But eventually, originally, whatever the original source text probably was written by Moses. And I pray one day these texts are restored to us or found or whatever. But I believe there's profound truth in the Apocalypse of Moses. I made the PDFs. I'll be putting them out. I'll be making a PDF of this entire book um, eventually. Okay. So there's things to talk about. I, I am going to do a study on this and point this out. But I'm seeing consistencies in the text about... From the days of Adam all the way into the days of Noah, um, I think it's very clear that male and female were separated in the church, in the Garden of Eden, because the Garden of Eden was the church. And that's going to be restored to us in the kingdom. That's what the whole Bible is all about. And I, I plan to do a study of that and point people out to this. It's really amazing. Um, all these texts that have nothing to do with each other, we can actually confirm this stuff. Now there's a story in the Apocalypse of Moses, how is Eve actually um, deceived? We know before the fall, the glory of Adam and Eve were, like, were likened onto the angels. And the stories go that, um, we're told in the book, the story that um, Adam and Eve were separated male and female were separated and they were called to guard paradise all right they're the only people on the earth so why are they called you know the other texts verify this they're called to minister and to guard the wit and, and to guard the commandments well if they're the only people on the earth that doesn't really make much sense to us but if we think about what it was like before the fall, um, it opens up a whole can of worms of revelation and understanding to ponder and study and to take seriously. Um, the covenant with man and beast was severed at the fall. Okay, one day we'll be able to wrestle with a grizzly bear when, when, when we're redeemed, you know, so to speak. As Isaiah 61 uh, tells us, and the other texts tell us this as well. So Adam and Eve probably had harmony with all the animals. Um, so Eve was eventually deceived because I think they were actually intermingled, um, interliving with the angels. And we're told that Eve was deceived because the angels left paradise to worship God. And that's when the devil um, deceived the serpent and entered into the serpent. That's a whole nother story to our truth. 
and um, and that's when the serpent through you know the devil through the serpent started deceiving and talking to Eve and this was possible because Adam was not with her Adam was on his other side guarding the other side of paradise and the angels were praising Yahuwah and weren't around and when we look at our Bibles, this stuff makes sense. It's hard to think of the reality and the truths that this opens up, but um, it's amazing, guys. Um, I can't really grasp it all because I'm not that familiar with the text, but we can begin to piece together what really happened in the garden. And it makes sense that Moses would write this book that, I don't know, has a mysterious title of the Apocalypse of Moses. And it is about the revelation of the end times. And the Bible tells us we can't understand the end unless we understand the beginning. So yes, I believe, the, I believe you know, the apocalypse of Moses is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy passed down through hundreds and thousands of years. But the original source text was probably written by Moses himself. And um, I see a lot of integrity in this text. Um, it's actually pretty profound. And you know, just because we don't have the original, it doesn't mean we can't glean all the wisdom that um, it has for us. So there's all these amazing stories that I that do make sense when you meditate on it. It does get verified through... Guys, I, I'm going to do a video, a study on... Really, we can literally confirm that from the days of Adam all the way to the days of Noah, at least male and female were ordained to separate in the church and it was like that on noah's ark okay god this is a commandment of god that is lost in our time um even on noah's ark males and the females were separated one on one side the other on the other side in adam's body and w along with all the mysteries of the church we don't even know what that means were in the middle of the ark in between the male and the female and of course that is a symbology of our redemption when the male and female eventually one day become one these things we you know as paul wrote these things are a mystery and it's the, the scholars that put this book together believe paul in second corinthians talking about this he's probably talking about this was referring to the apocalypse of moses um and i don't doubt that one bit so it's very amazing very amazing stuff guys um so i'm making pdfs of this stuff and i, I just invite people to because i want to share this stuff the truth should be shared and i want to invite you guys to read this stuff and um ponder pray about it and study guys read the extra biblical text don't be afraid start with start with the popular text that you know have um that you know have integrity through scholars like the book of Enoch the book of Jubilee start with the basics I really want to encourage people to start reading and studying these extra biblical texts and verify everything through your Bible that's what a biblical canon is the biblical canon means like an anchor it's what we always are rooted in it's meant for the worthy and the unworthy and it's not putting our Bibles down or or belittling it at all because our Bibles are amazing we can't do without our Bibles of course but at the same time, it's meant for the unworthy and the worthy. It's meant for everybody. And these extra biblical texts are meant for the wise because it's not so you need to sermon, you need to study, you need to figure this stuff out. And you just see Yah's goodness and his sovereign goodness in all, in all of it. And I really feel like, guys, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel like I want to cry like... I spent a couple hours last night looking for different translations of the dialogue of the Savior. And I really felt like the Holy Spirit was telling, he's gonna restore these texts to us. I don't know, I don't know. But he cares. I, I may not be able to really interpret what I feel on the Holy Spirit, but he cares about us having the truth. We need to have the truth because our peer people perish for the lack of knowing the truth. And it's God's will. He wants us to study. We're called to study and search these things out. Guys, his burden is light. 
and is right he is meek and humble his burden is light all he asks of us are to learn of him it is a joyous thing to be learning of him it is a joy i mean just as the scriptures say when you get wisdom i'm telling you when you get a revelation or wisdom right and you know that it's the truth of our existence just as the wisdom of solomon says just as it says in proverbs okay happy is that person and nothing can it doesn't matter you just you're carefree you are just carefree and nothing can take that away and and you can't be moved because it is it is the truth that cannot be moved that is eternal and when you have that you just bring so much joy and and you can't be moved exactly as the scriptures say happy is that man and careless is that man carefree it, it is an awesome thing to be studying and searching and and guys we live in a time where we have all this stuff at the tip of our, right in our phones we we can begin to access this stuff it's profound the amount of information that we have at our at our disposal is overwhelming and it's prevalent for us to to be using it because our people perish for lack of knowledge and wisdom of the world puffs up but the knowledge of God lasts forever and it is an invincible shield that's how you defeat the enemy because the future is ours when you know the future and live by the commandments you cannot be moved when you live by and understand what is eternal and infinite what is temporal and fleeting cannot move you and that's how we persevere it is really important to search out these things and I, I don't know what Yah's plan is for us with these with the text and the text that Moses originally wrote and I I know we'll get them one day I, I believe these things I believe the truth is meant to be freely shared you know it, it needs to be protected and guarded at the same time but and we see these prophecies guys the church of Philadelphia the church that was not rebuked in the book of Revelation was a library of truth it was a huge library in real life in, in, in its historical context it was a library of truth You know, take a large sum of money and turn it into gold. So yeah, it's amazing, guys. I'm gonna be doing studies, and 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 you know, these audio books are very tedious to make or not fun to make. But um, I am gonna be making them because it really does help understand. I want if you don't have time and energy to read because it does consume away our flesh as. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes, you know, it's wearisome. But much study is wearisome, but these audiobooks really help in the process. I live off these audiobooks, guys. I live off this stuff. Um, so, um, I just want to recommend, you know, I don't know, that's my little chat. Really amazing. Um, I'll be putting out these PDFs uh, later on today. Um, at least the Apocalypse of Moses, I have the PDF. I just had to, you know, I had to go home and, and do it. But uh, uh, it's all scanned. So, um, pretty profound. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your day.